Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're talking about the Godot game engine. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you obviously know what Godot is all about. I've been covering it basically since it was released, uh, and I've done a number of tutorials on it, etc. But if you happen to be new here, uh, Godot is an open source game engine. It's probably the most popular open source game engine used to create 2D and 3D games. So we're talking about today because Godot 3.2.2 was just released. So if you're interested in checking out Godot, it's available at GodotEngine.org. I'm not going to dwell on Godot engine any more than that. If you want to learn more about it, check my channel. I have tons and tons and tons of content on the Godot engine. So instead, what we're going to be looking at is the 3.2.2 release. Now, this release is actually uh, pretty significant for being a maintenance release, and especially because Godot uh, 4.0 is on the horizon. Uh, so with that being said, you generally expect that the... Um, all the major new releases features are going to be in the next version, but quite a bit of stuff actually made it into the 3.2.2 release, as we are going to see here. Now, obviously, being a maintenance release means there's a ton of bug fixes and minor improvements, uh, but we actually got a couple of pretty major things as well that we are going to see in just a second. Uh, so we've got new feature-wise, C-Sharp support is now available for iOS. Uh, C-Sharp was added in 3, and then it's kind of come to more and more platforms as we go. We're basically getting to almost completeness for C-Sharp support right now. iOS has a couple of issues because you can't use uh, dynamic languages on uh, iOS platform, so you have to compile it ahead of time. And that's what they've done. The scripts will be compiled using the uh, ahead of time uh, compiler for iOS. Um, so that's a behind the scenes thing. You won't notice it. It won't make a difference to you. The funny thing here is uh, the developer behind it, um, Ignacio, he was sponsored by Microsoft to do the C Sharp work. And now C Sharp can support to iOS. The only platform it can't do right now is UWP. If you don't know what UWP means, that's the universal Windows platform. <laughs> so uh, Microsoft sponsored the C Sharp development, but the one language that isn't currently supported kind of hilariously is their own platform. So I guess it shows that they don't have a hand or a direct manipulation in how their, their grant is done. So anyways, yeah, you can now run on uh, your iPhone or iPad devices. Definitely nice to see there if you are a C-sharp developer. Next up, and this one's actually pretty big, and people have been asking for this forever, both in 2D and 3D world, and that is batching. And we finally got it for 2D. Batching is going to come or, um, in the, the 4.0 release for 3D, but 2D got it. So the nice here is in the um the renderer for 2D now, you can sp uh, batch a number sprites together. By batching it, basically, you're you're forming them all into one big draw call as a bunch of making a whole bunch of different draw calls. It really speeds things up. So the question is, how much does it speed things up? Well, in their own examples, we went from 192 frames per second to 195, or 44 frames per second to 327. So yeah, um, the sprite changes definitely uh, has some pretty big ramifications with the, with the uh, sprite batching. So that's definitely nice to see. Top one is 10 thousand sprites. So again, 92 to 195. People have been asking for batching for years, and we've currently got it, which is definitely nice to see at this point in time. There's also a re-architecting of the Android plugin system. Um, Notably, he re-architected the plugin system to leverage the Android AAR library file format, allows easy distribution and use of Android plugins using a custom GDAP metadata file. A new plugin system is backward com incompatible with 3.2 and 3.21 system, but both systems are kept functional in future releases of this branch. Uh, since we previously did not version our Android plugin systems, this new one is now labeled V1 and is uh, the starting point for the modern Android ecosystem. Uh, the documentation was updated as well. In the process, the Google Payment V3 built-in Android module has been ported to an external first-party Google uh, Godot Google Pay uh, billing plugin. Uh, so that's nice to see as well. And then we've got DTLS support and eNet integration. There's actually an example. We'll see this in just a second. Uh, eNet uh, we'll cover off in a minute. It's a networking solution. Uh, so we now have uh, DTLS. It's a transmit. It's a um, encryption format on top of eNet e protocol. That support is now here. Uh, we've got better handling of variants pointing to released objects. So basically you can't have, uh, if an object became released, the variant pointing at it could basically become a memory leak. Thankfully that is now gone. Uh, and of course the, the documentation and localization of documentation has improved across the board and it kind of improves with every single version. On top of that, there was more than 800 commits from 140 contributors. That's like the nice thing about the power of an open source project. And here are some of the changes. I'm not going to get into them. It's pretty uh, minute level stuff, uh, but improvements to the A star algorithm, improvements to C sharp support, uh, bug improvements, fixes, and so on. So there's a ton of small improvements in this particular release. Now, you may have noticed the title graphic when we came in and the graphic up here. That is credit to Adventure, uh, a charming pixel rich, pixel art, lore rich, turn based, crazy RPG set in a cursed fairy tale world 
world inspired by the Mother series and Undertale developed by Infamous Rabbit. Uh, so do check that out. I will link this article. I will have that link down below if you want to check that particular game out. It's nice to see more and more titles coming soon to uh, stores that were made with the Godot engine. Uh, a little bit more about Enet with DLTS encryption. So you can see it in action here. So you can see the, the process of setting up an Enet server. The actual code required to do so is here. I got to say, I really do find now that if code isn't uh, marked up or colored, syntax coloring, I find it really hard to read these days. But you can see an actual uh, implementation. This is an implementation of uh, Enet and DTLS. Uh, so you can check out how to set up a certificate and so on. All the documentation is available right here. If you are curious, Enet is... Um, the purpose is to provide a relatively thin, simple, and robust networking communication layer on top of UDP. So it, it is a networking solution um, that's kind of a, a thin layer over top of UDP. Uh, and then again, uh, the uh, D DTLS is a, a, a an encryption uh, scheme that goes on top of ENET. All right, so that is the release. Uh, if, again, if you are interested, head on over to GodotEngine.org and download it. Uh, all the links will be down below. Uh, let me know what you think of this release. So again, we got some pretty big stuff in here. We got, again, C Sharp support is pretty much on every single platform, except ironically enough, uh, Microsoft's, because you know, uh, Microsoft sponsored it. Uh, we got the networking improvements, and that was sponsored by Mozilla. So it's nice to see these, these sponsors actually directly helping the development of the Godot engine. Uh, we got Sprite which is definitely going to be huge for 2D games. And of course, we've got a ton of improvements uh, across the board. So let me know what you think of this release, uh, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.